This is Britain. It is North Britain. It is Scotland. But it very definitely still is Britain. And forevermore shall be as far as I am concerned. That's why there's a British flag flying atop Edinburgh Castle. That's why the British Army are inside it. And as you can see, busy preparations are underway for the Royal Military Tattoo, a British institution visited by many millions over many, many decades. It is a sight to see, as you can count, there are many sightseers here to see it. I speak on the day that the separatist Scottish National Party launched yet another bid to break up Britain, to separate Scotland from the rest of the country. The Union of the Crowns took place more than 400 years ago, ironically at the behest of a Scottish king who had become the king of both Scotland and England. A century later, in 1707, so well over now 300 years ago, the country joined with England and with Wales and became the United Kingdom. That ought to have been the end of the matter, but over the course of the 20th century, from the early 1930s, when a group of fascist sympathizers, sympathizers with Hitler, formed what became the Scottish National Party, the argument about separatism has continued interminably to the point that David Cameron, unwisely, certainly unwisely allowing the separatists to call all the shots, put it to a referendum in Scotland in 2014. He allowed the nationalists to choose the question. He allowed the nationalists to choose the date. He allowed the nationalists to choose the franchise. So that, for example, uh, the captain of Liverpool, the captain of Manchester United, had no vote on whether they were to become stateless, whether their country was to break up. But the captain of the Lithuanian football team, who happened very briefly to be living here in Edinburgh, did have a vote. Go figure. But notwithstanding all of these foolish concessions by David Cameron, the people voted in a once-in-a-lifetime referendum. A final say, as it was described by the nationalist leaders at the time, and the people voted overwhelmingly to remain a part of Britain. I predicted to the percentage point the exact result of that referendum in which I was active. I predicted on Andrew Neil's BBC show on the Sunday before polling that we would win 55 to 45, as indeed exactly we did. Now that very definitely should have been the end of the matter. The people had been asked in a binding referendum whether they wanted to leave Britain or not and had decisively rejected it. But instead, every day since 2014, Scotland has been dogged by what I call the neverendum, the attempt to reopen the matter and hold yet another referendum, which if it didn't go the right way, would of course be uh, merely the precursor to yet another referendum and another and another until the separatists eventually got what they want. And on this day in which I stand in the esplanade of Edinburgh Castle, Nicola Sturgeon, has just issued yet another divisive proposal for a referendum, this time an almost certainly illegal one, because without the permission of the Westminster Parliament, there can be no referendum on Scottish independence. And so the plan clearly is a kind of UDI, a kind of unilateral declaration of independence. Plainly, they intend to hold an illegal referendum in the hope that that will force Westminster's hand to begin negotiations with them about independence. Now, you probably already know 
I'm not a supporter of breaking up countries. I'm not someone who believes in separatism. I don't believe in it in Ireland, in Yemen, in Cyprus, in uh... Well, we're being thrown out of Britain's Edinburgh Castle. Well, as I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted by the forces of the crown, well, a servant of the crown, really. I don't believe in breaking up countries. I don't believe in partition, particularly of islands. I spent my whole life opposing the partition of Ireland. I could never agree to the partitioning of a different island called Britain. I opposed the breakup of uh, Yugoslavia. I opposed the breakup of Czechoslovakia, of even the USSR. I oppose the partition of Cyprus. I oppose the partition of Yemen, of Israel, Palestine, of so many places around the world. Except where there is an obvious case of national oppression by one nation against another nation inside a state. But only a lunatic could claim that that was true of Britain. It was a Scottish king that founded Britain. It was Scottish parliamentarians that voted to create Britain in 1707. It was obvious from the beginning that Scotland and England together were involved in national oppression of people all over the world. In fact, Scotland colonized Ireland before Britain existed, before the English ever arrived and the skirl of the pipes that you can hear in the background, the swagger of the kilt was often accompanied by a fusillade of shots against the natives gunning them down. Scotland profited mightily from the existence of national oppression against other people. The British Empire was a joint Scottish and English venture. There is no national oppression of Scots in Britain. Many of the captains of industry, of finance, of media, of politics are themselves Scottish. There is oppression in Britain. It's class oppression. Oppression by the very few against the very many. And they make no distinction as to whether or not the people that are being oppressed are Scottish or English. In fact, the Scottish taxpayer gets thousands of pounds extra in public expenditure over what they get in England and Wales from the British Exchequer. And some of the very poorest people in the entire country live in England. And I have represented some of them in Parliament. In fact, there are more poor people within a seven mile radius of the Palace of Westminster than there are in the whole of the United Kingdom. So I want to unite the people of Britain to fight against that class oppression and to liberate all of the working class people in this island and further beyond in time. But let's start with Britain, make it a better Britain, a fairer Britain, a Britain where the wealth created by the workers is shared by the workers throughout this land. Me, I will never, until my last second on this earth, concede that it's any progress at all to break up Britain on nationalistic lines.